what's good y'all it's your boy ross back at it again with another video so i was thinking about this the other day um and i kind of wanted to make a video about it and kind of get your guys thoughts and opinions on it if you you know how do you feel about this particular topic um is the the chase for the title in a sense for a baby face always better than the actual title reign like is the chase for the championship usually the better outcome than when the person actually wins the championship and then people kind of you know don't really care as much and i've had to really think about this like of out of all the times i wanted a particular wrestler to win the championship when they actually won the championship did i care much about their title reign afterwards and the first person i i instantly thought of and uh is um daniel bryan at the height of the yes movement i think it was one of the most craziest things we had seen recently in wwe at that time and the chase for it was fantastic the build for it was fantastic in the sense of daniel bryan the ultimate baby face underdog trying to overcome the authority and everything that the authority was throwing at him and at the time the shield they were heels they were working for the authority so they were throwing everything at this man and he was always trying to overcome it the whole storyline of you're just a b plus player like that can that resonates with people who go to a nine to five and and dealing with someone like a boss that just doesn't value them they value them as nothing more than b plus they don't value them as, as someone that could that can really contribute they just you know look at you as like a a role player and you can relate to that so that story was so good and every time he got screwed you wanted to see him overcome it prime example when he finally beat when he won at uh SummerSlam that year, he beat John Cena. It was a great moment. Then Triple H screws him, pedigrees him. Randy Orton cashes in on him, and it was one of the craziest endings to a pay-per-view I had seen in a quite some time up to that point. Because you were at this ultimate high. They had the confetti and everything, and then Triple H screws him. And they reinforce you're just a b plus player that's it i love that so now the yes movement is super hot it's a fever pitch you want to see him win you had to go through all these hoops and obstacles he wasn't even a part of the royal rumble match that year fans dest destroyed that royal rumble that year they didn't really care about it like he wasn't even a part of it he had to go through hoops just to get the match at wrestlemania 30 he ends up beating Triple H, then ends up getting injured by him, and then he ends up winning a triple threat match, and it was an amazing moment, and now we're like, okay, we're at this super huge high, what's going to happen, and then he ended up uh, getting injured, he had to relinquish the belt, so we don't know if that high would have stayed that way, and I feel like a lot of times, especially just in storytelling, wanting the, the, the good guy to win, and when they finally do win, now is what happens afterwards. It's usually, you know, it's a good moment, but do the, do the person that's watching the movie or watching the story, are they invested now that this person has achieved that goal that they've been fighting for, and where does the downfall come, you know? And we never got to see the downfall of that, obviously, because, you know, he had to uh, relinquish the belt and ultimately had to retire for a little bit, you know? So it was one of those things we don't really know if his title reign would have been a success, um, the one I can think of where people were really happy about another one, and it is in relation to Daniel Bryan and Kofi Kingston, Kofi Mania, how that happened so organically. And the fight for it was so good in the sense of Kofi doing all he can to make sure that he's able to obtain the championship that he's always wanted to attain since he's been in the company and it's always eluded him. He was close with randy orton at one point but there was some backstage politic and, and a, a botch that caused them to de-push him so to see him get that moment over brian uh daniel bryan you know the person that is the ultimate well at the time he was a heel but he, you know at one point his story was overcoming the odds and now kofi 
overcoming the odds and him getting that moment and winning it was beautiful and then the title reign itself like once he got to the top of the mountain i was like all right this is great the title reign it, it didn't hit and i think there's a combination of feuds I, I think the randy orton feud should have been a lot better but the matches didn't really live up and also i think what hurt kofi is like we're all about the you know the power of positivity that was the thing all this other stuff you're the champ but it's like at some point you gotta you know you gotta get upset you gotta let go of that power of positivity not in the sense of not be positive and and you know want to continue to strive to be better but at the same time it's like you're the champion now you know people are gonna come at you you know people are gonna do whatever it takes to get that title off of you and they're gonna be as disrespectful as possible so you kind of got to meet them with that edge and i think just the fuse that they had the people that they had lined up for him it just it didn't really resonate and people started to not care and i i think uh another good recipe to a good title reign outside of just the chase itself is good feuds good good feuds help a championship reign to keep that momentum like imagine if because I, I was looking forward to that Randy Orton feud, you know what I'm saying? But the match itself, the matches they had weren't really, you know, nothing to go home about. I just felt like Kofi was still in that bag of positivity and stuff. I wanted Kofi to get a little edgier. And I think it, it also comes into play with WWE's not, they're not good at booking baby faces. They are not. They are notoriously bad at booking baby faces. The heels, they can work. But the baby faces, for whatever reason, they're not that good. It's rare that you get a good baby face booked correctly in WWE. WWE. Um, prime example. A lot of us grew up in the Attitude Era. Stone Cold is the prime example. He was going against Vince McMahon, the corporation. He, you know what I'm saying? He was going against The Rock. Like, he's going against these powerful figures, and you wanted Stone Cold to overcome him. But the one thing about Stone Cold that... A lot of us appreciate it. He didn't take no BS. So even his chase was great. When he finally got the title, it was great. And he was able to maintain that intensity and that that the hype for him being a champ. Because one, they had some good opponents and good feuds lined up for him. Two, he's a babyface that doesn't take crap. You know what I'm saying? He he's not even traditionally like this good guy. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, people care. They root for him. So by by default, he's like, he's the anti-hero. He's the anti-hero. He's not going to sit up here and, you know what I'm saying, kiss babies or nothing like that. If anything, he's going to flip off the baby just because, you know, because he can. And the people are going to like that because he's the anti-hero. He's not a goody two-shoes. So now his character didn't change, you know what I'm saying, in a sense of like, being the guy that's he has to deal with these 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 uh odds that are stacked up against him like okay i'm the champ but if somebody screws me or they screws me out of a match or i get cheated or whatever best believe i'm gonna get my revenge on them champion or not he kind of kept that same intensity as a champ and it didn't die down and i, and I feel like sometimes when we want these wrestlers you know these characters to get over I feel like once they get the title, it's like they become extra goody two shoes. And it's like they don't have that same intensity that they had when they were trying to get it, if that makes any sense. And I, I feel like that's sometimes how it's booked that way or whatnot, because they're a baby face or they got to act a certain way. But I just feel like if you give these baby faces just a little bit of edge. You know, a little bit of realism. Like, how would I feel if somebody's after my title, but they start disrespecting my family? I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna go there with you. We about to, we about to, I'm gonna show you what's up. I'm gonna show you why I'm the champion, and I'm gonna show you what's up. And like, have a little bit of that edge, and it kind of keeps people wanting to see you be champion for a while. You know, so that's just my thought process. You know, I feel like the a lot of the times the chase is always especially you know in a wrestling term wrestling sense a lot of the times it's not all the time but a lot of times the chase is always better than the actual <laughs> actual 
grabbing of the championship and actually holding it there's only a few times where the the chase and the title reign were one one in the same they were both fairly good but usually once champ like the baby face gets the title then they start to get stale the matches and feuds don't really live up it's like the matches and feuds on the chase is is much better because you know you want them to get it but they keep getting screwed out of it now it's like they got it and they got to retain it but the matches and feuds don't really match the energy that you would think someone that worked so hard to get the title and want to keep it, it it doesn't match so honestly it's a combination of booking booking when it comes to the uh the 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 opposition who's going to be facing him the competitors the heels it's a combination of that it's a combination of the baby faces actually having a little bit more grit to them in my opinion to make you you know want to see them continuously be at the top you know i think it's a combination of those things as well um so comment down below let me know how do you guys feel about um the chase for titles among the baby faces in wwe you know what I'm saying? i want to get your thoughts and opinions do you feel like the chase is uh usually better than when the person actually becomes the champion or do you feel like a lot of times the chase in the champion uh championship run kind of run one in the same let me know down below but i appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on the channel road to 150k now i'm still here on the speed of youtube wrestling champion world peace out kicking me see you on the next one peace